Alright guys, let's revisit the Millennial Pinks uh, palette from Melt Cosmetics. I bought this when it was released around Valentine's Day. I did actually do a first impressions with it and the, the way I left things off was a little bit, I'm unsure how I feel about this palette, it leaves me a little bit lukewarm. That hasn't changed, let me tell you. I've used this a couple of times afterwards, not too many I have to say, but I remain lukewarm about it, so let's do a look. One of the things that I'm going to say about it, um, I've come to the conclusion that this is not a palette where you can layer too many things together, not when it comes to the mattes, not when it comes to the shimmers, not when it comes to the different colors <laughs> together. Uh, personally, I find that this palette works better for me if I stick to simpler looks and I don't mix in too many things. So that be with that being said, uh, probably we're not going to be touching at all the gray shades today because it's the summer and I really don't feel like these, any of these shades fits with uh, the time of the year and the time of the day and what I'm going to do which is basically be at home and work from home. So we're going to do something that I also feel like a little bit more summer appropriate which is use like the peachy pink side of the palette. So let's do another look with it and see how we're going to enjoy that. So through my crease or like more like the region above my crease actually right here I'm going to layer these two shades next to each other the shades Pink Leather and Flamingo Dream which are a very light pink this shade over here is a little bit chalky but hey what you gotta do probably has a lot of white pigment to it and this peachy pink over here which is actually really beautiful which is going to go in the outer part of my crease. It's probably going to be very hard to tell on camera, but this shade, because it's a little bit chalky, tends to look a little bit like almost crappy on the lid, so it makes your lids a little bit more textured and like older looking, which is something I don't really like, but I feel like is not something you can ever really avoid when you have a shade with this color. Next I'm going to dip into the peachy pink, the Flamingo Dream shade, which I actually really, really enjoy. I have never really had any issues with this particular shade. And I'm going to run that here on the outer part of my crease to meet up with the pink leather shade. Now, something that you're going to notice, I'm actually not going to bring this shade here into my outer corners because if I try to layer the next shade over top of it, it doesn't work. So I'm going to keep the outer part of my lid free so that I can put the next matte shade in there. Uh, just FYI, if you're seeing something weirdly textured here on my lid, it's not because the eyeshadows are not blended well or because something's wrong with them, it's because something's wrong with my eyelid. It has like a little bump there. I'm going to take a pencil brush and dip into this shade here, the shade Modern Love, which looks like a deep, like, mauvey, browny, red sort of shade. Uh, it looks much deeper in the pen than it actually translates on the lid, which is why it doesn't really serve much to deepen this shade, which is why I don't really like layer the two because it's almost pointless because you're really not going to see that much deepening so I actually find it better if I leave them a little bit more separated because they mix better in terms of their textures and they look a little bit more distinct in terms of their color so I'm going to put this shade here in the outer V do you see? Supposedly you should see quite a dramatic difference between these two shades but I don't really feel like there is a dramatic difference in terms of especially the depth of the shade Modern Love. On my lid I'm going to apply consequentially these two shades over here, the two shimmers. These are the shades the shade Mixed Emotions and Rosé Brunch. And I'm going to put this one towards the outer part, this one towards the inner part of my lid and then we're going to see about the inner corner highlight. And I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm not going to use a glitter glue because I actually feel like these shades apply worse over a glitter glue, like they, they look more flaky when they're applied over a glitter glue. So I'm just going to try them over top of, um, you know, eyeshadow primer as it is and see whether that helps them to apply nicer. This shade actually applies quite sheer without any sort of help. These are not working all too well without any sort of help. So what I'm going to do is take a brush and I'm going to spritz my brush with Fix Plus and use the shades that way.
I'm going to go into the lighter shade, the shade Rosé Brunch, and use that and use that on my brush as well, which is still hopefully a little bit wet from before. Just don't like how these shades apply, man. I don't like it. Can you see that? It looks like I have flakes over top of my bare skin. Okay, towards the center now I went in with a very wet brush and the shade Mixed Emotions, which is the deeper pink shade. Look how textured it looks now. There's just no, no good way to make these shades work. Okay, I'm applying this one now without layering it too much. Fuck, look how textured this looks. Spread my brush. Let's at least have them equally crappy. In minor corners I'm going to apply this shade over here, which is a little bit of like a pinky peachy pink iridescent shade. It's called Pink Noise. It's one of the few shades in this palette that actually has a really nice formula to it. Very smooth. I think you can also use it as a highlighter on your face. I'm going to take the shade Modern Love again and apply that on my like lower lash line area to connect with the outer part of the eye. Last but not least, I'm going to apply this Kiko eyeshadow stick. This is the number 45 from Kiko. It is a beautiful peach with golden shimmer through it. And the reason I want to put this on is because I want to put an orange lipstick with golden shimmer in it. Okay guys, here is an up close and personal. I'm, I, I'm sure you can see how textured this shade looks on my lid. I mean it has a beautiful shine and theoretically I really like this shade. Also the shade next to it, the one towards the inner part of my lid. But I feel like they both look really textured. So upon revisiting the Melt Millennial Pinks palette I remain very lukewarm about it because I feel like there's something off with the quality of these shimmers. I definitely feel like pretty much all these shimmers with the exception of this one over here, the uh, iridescent peach pink duochrome are offenders in that respect. They just, they all have this like flakiness to them where they apply very intensely and make your skin look textured in one spot and then they completely don't apply like on another part of your skin making it look a little bit like bare, so it's super weird. Let me swatch these for you. Okay, this is the shade Rosé Brunch. This is the shade Mixed Emotions. This is Ruby Spar, which I feel like is probably one of the better ones in that respect. And this is the Silver Moon Glow. Sorry, it's not Silver Moon Glow, it's just called Moon Glow, but it's a silver. Theoretically, they are beautiful shades. Oh, let me just wash the shade Pink Noise next to them so you can see the difference. Yeah, this one has a bit more of an iridescent iridescence to it, so I'm not really sure whether you will be able to see. But let me see. Can you see these two shades in particular? I don't know. I don't really know how else to explain it. I continue to be really frustrated by it. I continue to have a love-hate relationship with this palette. I really want to love it and I really don't. I'm, I'm not able to find a way to make these shimmers look good on my skin. It could be that it has something to do with the way I apply metallic eyeshadows. I really want them to be punchy and very reflective. And these shades, you either have to apply them as like a very light wash with tiny bits of like iridescence to it where the those flakes like uh, stick to your skin or I don't know, if you foil them with Fix Plus, you see they immediately turn into this flaky mess. The same happens, by the way, if you apply them over the glitter glue. So I can't really find a way to make them look beautiful. 
not really sure what to do with this palette. I will keep it because I really like the colors in it. I will continue to try to make, especially in these two shades over here, work on my lids and look a little bit less textured because I just want to be able to use this palette. It was a bit of a struggle bus today, but I definitely feel like it has more to do with the palette than with my application skills because I've worked with metallic eyeshadows before. I have other metallic eyeshadows from Melt Cosmetics which work much much better than these shades. I'm very curious if you guys have this palette, how do you make it work? What do you find to be the optimal way to use these metallic shades? Yeah, let's just chat. Please give me some advice if you have any insights on that. I would love to hear your feedback. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to see more of me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!